This training video outlines the steps to create your first hydraulic or electrohydraulic circuit in Automation Studio. In the process of recreating this circuit, the user will learn how to create a hydraulic circuit with generic components from library, how to do circuit addition, how to assess component properties and help, how to create a control sequence and how to run simulation and analyze the circuit. All components needed to build your first hydraulic circuit are contained in the main hydraulic library. In order to create the circuit, move the components from the library onto the schematic. To do so, select the desired component from the library that is a fixed displacement pump with shaft, drag and drop it onto the schematic while holding down the left mouse click. Similarly, drag and drop an engine, a hydrostatic reservoir, a double acting cylinder, a 4x2 way normally open valve, and a pressure relief valve with tank. Now to zoom in the schematic, go to the view tab of the ribbon bar and click on zoom in function under the zoom tools. Other zoom functions like zoom page, previous zoom, zoom all components can also be found at this location. Alternatively, to zoom in and out, press and hold down the control key then scroll up to zoom in or scroll down to zoom out of the page. Software will zoom where you are pointing your cursor. To pan the document, click on the panning function of zoom tools. When you click on the panning function, the cursor transforms into a hand and then you can pan the document by holding the left mouse click and moving the cursor. Alternatively, you can press and hold down the space bar and move the cursor to pan the document. To disable this function, just right click on the document. Now establish connection between these components to complete your hydraulic circuit. To connect components, move your cursor over a red connection port and click when the target sign appears, release the button, draw your line with the cursor and click on a second connection port to establish connection between those two components. Both connection ports automatically become black when linked. Similarly, connect the outlet port of the pump to the pressure in port of the directional valve. In order to connect the tank out port of the directional valve with the tank, you need to change path during connection. To do so, when drawing a line while moving your cursor, click when you need to create a 90 degree turn and connect. Similarly, connect the two ports of the cylinder with the working ports of the directional valve. Now, connect the relief valve to the circuit by connecting it to the hydraulic line joining pump and directional valve. While tracing a line coming across another line, there is no target sign that usually allows you to make a connection. Therefore, you need to double click on the line to make a junction. When a three line junction is created, a filled black connector is automatically created at the junction. To connect the engine with the shaft of the pump, the target symbol technique can't be used as these ports characterize a mechanical connection. Therefore, to connect the engine shaft with the pump shaft, you need to select the engine and drag and drop its connection port over the mechanical connection port of the pump. Now that all the components are connected, you can start the simulation. For that, go to the simulation tab of the ribbon bar and click on normal simulation icon under the control functions to start the simulation. While in simulation, when hovering over a component, if the cursor turns into a hand icon, you can click to interact with that component. 
click on the valve command which is a lever in this case to change the position of the directional valve to straight through position so that flow is allowed into the piston end of the cylinder resulting in its extension. On clicking again it moves back to its original position which allows flow in reverse direction resulting in the retraction of the cylinder. While in simulation you can also view a cross section animation for any component shown in red such as pump, relief valve, cylinder. Simply right click on component and select animation. You can see the animated view on a separate window. Close the animation window and stop simulation by clicking on stop simulation icon under the control tools. Now let's learn how to change the layout of a circuit. You can rearrange a component's position by hovering the cursor over a component and move the mouse by holding the left click. Alternatively, you can select the component on the schematic and use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move them in the desired direction. Note that when a component is moved on the schematic, its hydraulic line connections with other components remain intact and the lines change their shape automatically. Now you will learn how to change the technical properties of a component. For that, add another double acting cylinder on the schematic. You can add the cylinder by drag and drop operation or by just directly copying the cylinder already available on the schematic. To do so, simply right click on cylinder and select copy. Then right click on document and select paste. Note that the component will be pasted where you are pointing your mouse cursor. Now this second cylinder needs to be connected in parallel with the first one. So connect the two cylinder in this fashion by inserting junction. Now apply a load and an angle to the second cylinder. To open the component properties window of the second cylinder, right click on it and select component properties. You can also open the component properties window by double clicking over the component. Now select the data from the left side menu and change the inclination to 40 degree. Similarly change the external load to 1000 kg. You can also check the box on the left of the value to display that information on the schematic. Note that, that any change in the technical properties will not affect the component's visual representation. If you want to change the visual representation of a component, functions to rotate, flip, align, distribute and order components can be assessed from the edit tab of the ribbon bar under the layout tools. Just click on component and select desired functions or simply right click on component and select desired components or you can use the assigned hotkeys. Let's visually represent the inclination of the cylinder. To do so, click on it then click on position function in the layout tools and select rotation. Hover the mouse cursor over the top right circle of the component. When the rotation sign appears, click and hold the left mouse button and move the cursor to rotate the component. All components in Automation Studio also have a help file describing their functionality. Right click on component and select context help. In this window, you can get information about the operation of the component and its features. This window also provides description of each property of the component available in the data tab of its component properties window such as properties related to its modeling, characteristics, external data, operating conditions and so on. 
You can also access the help file by clicking on the component and pressing the F1 key of the keyboard. You can also add measuring instruments in the circuit. Add a pressure gas from the library to take pressure readings during the simulation and connect it to the inlet port of the relief valve. Now add a flow meter from the library and place it between the pump and relief valve junction to measure flow. When adding a component directly from the library, you can drop it onto a line and it will automatically get insert into the schematic. Now that measuring instruments have been added, start the simulation to see your circuit come to life. When the position of the directional valve is changed, the cylinder on the left will extend first since there is no load applied to it. The cylinder on the right will extend once the first cylinder is fully extended and the pressure is increased enough to extend the second cylinder that has an inclination of 40 degree and an external load of 1000 kg. Similarly, when the position of the directional valve is changed again, the right cylinder will retract first followed by the left one. This happens as the external load is adding in the retraction of the right cylinder. You can also change the parameters during the simulation. For example, if you move your mouse over the pressure relief valve or over the pump, your cursor will change to a hand. Left click on it to modify its setting and the effect of these changes can be seen in the simulation in real time. For example, if you reduce the displacement of the pump to half that is 50. You can observe that the flow in the circuit has also decreased by that factor. Similarly, if you modify the cracking pressure of the relief valve, you can observe the change in pressure readings of the pressure gas. Restore the default value and stop simulation. Now, Let's create the electrohydraulic circuit. Before that, go back to your original circuit. For that, you need to delete the second cylinder and the lines connected to it. Firstly, disconnect the second cylinder from the circuit. For that, press and hold down the shift key, click on component and drag it elsewhere on the schematic. Now, delete this cylinder by clicking on it once and pressing the delete key of your keyboard. You can also delete a component by right clicking on it and selecting delete. Similarly, delete the second hydraulic line. This 4x2 normally open directional valve is currently controlled by a lever. But for the electrohydraulic circuit, you need a solenoid command instead. To change the command type, double click on the directional valve to assess its component properties window and select the technical specifications from the left side menu. Now double click on the lever to open the command selection window and select solenoid DCSC command and apply. To modify the position of the solenoid command as per your need, use these arrows. When satisfied with the position, click on the green check button to apply the changes and close the window. Now that the valve is transformed into an electrically solenoid valve and the question mark symbol above the solenoid signifies that it needs an electrical input signal to change spool position. In order to provide the electrical signal for valve operation, you need to create a simple electrical control circuit. All the components needed to create this circuit are available in the electrical control main library. Select electrical control JIC standard library and drag and drop a power supply 24 volt, a common 0 volt, a normally open push button. When inserting an electrical control component on the schematic, the software asks for an alias for the component which is displayed on the schematic and this schematic is used to identify the component when linking it with other components. 
let's give it an alias pb1 and apply similarly drag and drop a solenoid dcac and give it alias a plus a coil give it alias c1 and a normally open contact Now connect all these components to create your electrical control circuit. Now link the solenoid of the directional valve with the electrical solenoid of the electrical control circuit. Double click on the directional valve to open the component properties window. Click on the variable assignment from the left side menu. Click on the solenoid icon of the directional valve. Use the filter from the compatible simulation variable section to sort the variables and only show the one matching your criteria. Here solenoid of the hydraulic directional valve has to be linked with solenoid of the electrical control circuit which has alias A+. So write A+, in the filter. Once identified, double click on the alias to create the link. You can observe question mark symbol has been replaced by A plus confirming that the link is created. You can also see in the association span that now there is an association between the two components. Similarly, link the normally open contact with the coil C1. Now that the links are made and the aliases are the same between the hydraulic and the electrical components, the circuit is ready to be simulated using both the technologies. Start the simulation. Click on PV1 and latch it in order to activate the push button and energize the solenoid A+. Observe that the directional valve changes its position and allows flow through the piston end of the cylinder which results in its extension. When you click on the push button again, the solenoid is de-energized and the directional valve moves back to its initial position allowing flow through the rod end of the cylinder which results in its retraction. In this way, you can create different hydraulic and electrohydraulic circuits.